Welcome back to another Overwatch League discussion video. Today, I'm going to be giving my review and thoughts on the Stage 3 Championship Showdown between the Shanghai Dragons and San Francisco Shock. I was going to make this video regardless of who was here because I always review the Stage Finals in a video, but this game was absolutely amazing, so I had extra motivation to make one of these this time around. As a quick courtesy reminder to anybody who has not seen the game yet, just know that I will be discussing the outcome of this game and some minor details about each map, so if you do not want to be spoiled, then I recommend clicking off this video right now or forever holding your peace. With that said, let's not waste any more time by getting straight into this review. Thing number one that I wanted to say is congrats to the Shanghai Dragons. You've officially gone from the very bottom all the way to the top. What an incredible playoff run these guys went on. This stage title is very well deserved. Their road to get here was absurdly difficult due to some of the competition they were forced to go up against. After squeaking into the playoffs as the number eight seed in the tournament, they would go on to convincingly defeat the NYXL and Vancouver Titans, then win a tightly contested game that would go the distance against the Shock. But I suppose we should take this one map at a time before I get too ahead of myself. The first map in the series we would end up seeing was Oasis, which was chosen by the Shock, of course, since they were the higher seed, by the way. And as we head into this map, you will immediately notice that the Shock decided to try and catch the Dragons off guard by running Striker, Architect, and Smurf. I'm not sure how the rest of you felt about this move, but I personally was a really big fan. The Dragons may be really good at DPS, but so are Striker and Architect. On paper, this seemed like a decent idea. Sure, Diem and Ding are the best Widowmaker and Ferret in the league respectively right now, but Striker's been practicing DPS a lot lately on stream, and we saw what Architect was capable of on Ferret during Season 1. And overall, I'd say they did a decent job of holding their own on Gardens and University. Diem and Ding still got the better of them, which is pretty obvious if you watch the game, and take a look at the stat comparison between Ding and Architect on Pharah, but still, the Shock definitely made things tough on the first two sections of the map. Smurf and Choyobin in particular made their presence felt with some very strong Orisa Hog play. One other noticeable thing on the side of the Shock was that Violet was surprisingly using Ana. Many people have speculated that he doesn't play a lot of Ana because he's not good at her, but clearly that's not the reason why anymore, because he looked pretty good in my opinion. Anyway. On City Center, the Dragons dominated the Shock. I mean, they put on a clinic. It doesn't get much worse than a 100% to zero loss. This map appeared to be fairly even until we got to this part of the game. The Shock got outplayed here completely. They were at the mercy of Shanghai strong play as a team. Everybody stepped up and contributed in some sort of way. Diem and Ding in particular finished this map really strong. Their strong performances would be a constant theme throughout this entire set as well. After the Dragons took a 1-0 lead, the Shock would select Numbani as the hybrid map. But before getting into the action, the Shock would go back to their normal lineup by subbing in Super, Sinatra, and Rascal. However, these substitutions really didn't make much of a difference. The Dragons rolled the Shock on their attack using a triple DPS Wrecking Ball comp. I kid you not when I say that they made their attack look easy. The Shock thought they could find similar success to their match against the Valiant by running Rascal on Baptiste, but that sadly would not end up being the case on their defense. Youngjin, Diem, Gamsu, and Ding absolutely dominated, while Luffy and Koma provided really good support. The Shock did try to make adjustments by switching Sinatra off Zarya and onto the Sombra, but it pretty much made no difference as the Dragons finished Numbani with over three minutes left in their time bank. It's been a long time since I've seen the Shock get dismantled like this. I'm used to seeing them dominate, so watching the exact opposite was a little bit strange. The Shock would come out and respond pretty well on their attack, however. Their Baptiste Goats comp seemed to be quite effective up until around point C. But unlike a certain team the Dragons beat in the quarterfinals, the Shock tried changing things up after a few failed attacks. They then tried the good old-fashioned Slambulance comp with Rascal and Roadhog, but that too seemed to fail as Shanghai's DPS led the way to a 2-0 lead at the half. After both teams talked it over, the Shock would select Horizon Lunar Colony as the first and only assault map of the series. They would continue to roll out with their Baptiste Goats comp, while Shanghai decided to keep using their same type of triple DPS comp with Wrecking Ball that's been working for them. And although the Dragons would capture point A with very little time, they made sure to make up for it by completing the map with over 2 minutes remaining in their time bank. One interesting thing about point B was that Diem decided to switch off of Widow and play the Hanzo instead. After swapping sides, the Shock decided to throw a Winston and Moira into the mix, and it seemed to find a bunch of success, as the Shock easily completed the map with 4 minutes and 43 seconds remaining in their time bank. As the Dragons commenced their attack in extra rounds, both teams decided to basically run exactly what they did the first time Shanghai attacked, with the exception being that Gamsu played some Orisa. Although they had significantly less time in their bank compared to the Shock, the Dragons made most of their second attack by capping Objective A and getting over 70% capture progress on point B. And if it weren't for Choi Obin and Violet carrying at the end, they definitely could have finished the map again. On their defense, they decided to keep Gamsu on the Orisa while Diem played the defensive Sombra. And oh boy did the Dragons do an excellent job of depleting San Francisco's large time bank. The Shock captured the first objective, but it would be on the final fight and only because of Sinatra's high value Graviton Surge. After getting a small 30 second map extension, Gamsu forced the Shock to wait out the supercharger he placed down. As they rotated into the right room, if you're looking at this from the defender's point of view, Diem solo emp super and Shanghai made quick work of him. Rascal also happened to get isolated during all the chaos so he got picked off as well. And with their 
only being a few seconds left on the clock, the Shock had no time for another fight as the Dragons took a commanding 3-0 lead in the series. Now the Shock were officially in the danger zone. The defending champs were now just one map loss away from losing their title. Meanwhile, the Dragons were one victory away from an epic redemption story. The Shock, however, were not quite done yet. Coming into Havana, the San Francisco Shock set the tone early by pushing the payload close to the end of the map, and this is definitely something to be proud of as Havana has proven to be a tough map to get super far into in the past. Like on Oasis, Choyobin once again found success with the Arisa Hog tank combo, and give it up for Violet for playing a decent Ana on this map. Ana is a pretty effective counter to Farah and Sombra, so having Violet play Ana over Moira or Zen was definitely the play. The Shock then made sure to keep this momentum in their favor by holding the Dragons to a very minimal amount of payload progress. The Baptiste Goats composition ended up being really successful on this hold, and as a bonus, we even got to see Sinatra play some Tracer for the final few fights after he died on Zarya towards the end of the game. Give props to Super for solo shattering Gamsu, by the way. Him and his team did an excellent job of realizing that Shanghai was depending on him as their engagement tool during that final fight. Having a 6v5 in your favor with more ultimates online pretty much guaranteed them a one team fight, allowing them to finally get a point on the board in the series. Because the Dragons finally lost, it was their turn to pick a map, and they decided to select Ilios, which really shouldn't come as much of a surprise since they were 5 and 1 on it coming into this match, and they showed exactly why they're so dominant on this map by starting off with a statement 100-0 victory on Ilios well. The Shock appeared to be at the mercy of Shanghai's Orisa Hog deep. PS comp. Shout out to Youngjin for keeping his opponents off the point with a perfectly timed whole hog at the end of the round. The Shock themselves tried to match Shanghai with an Orisa Hog combo of their own, while Sinatra and Rascal played Tracer and Sombra respectively. And although it failed, I thought it was a good strategy to run Tracer and Sombra because they're really good at pressuring Widowmaker, and when it clearly wasn't working, Sinatra for some reason tried to swap onto Widow. And that went about as well as you'd expect it to. Sinatra has never been known as somebody who can play Widow, and that held up to be true in this series. He literally got nothing done at all. The Shock would not let this rough start get to them though, as they responded with authority on Lighthouse using the good old-fashioned Slambulance comp. The Dragons were only able to flip the point once, but the control percentage did not stay in their favor for long, as the Shock won the final fight with ease since they had all six of their ultimates online. Then we head to Ruins, which should be the most Dragons' favorite part of the map, since Widow and DPS work really good here, but surprisingly, this advantage did not help them at all. The Shock got the better of them for sure. Everybody on the side of San Francisco made some good contributions to help them win a very tightly contested game on Ilios. Ruins in particular was really evenly matched and chaotic. I have to give it up to the Shock for being really clutch on the final fight of Ruins. They were able to all live through DMZ and P, then counter with one of their own. The follow-up also happened to be really good since they had so many ults to burn, so it was easy cleanup from there, pretty much. After taking this map, you could tell that the Shock players had their confidence and energy back heading into the second intermission of the set. The next map the Dragons chose after the break ended would end up being Eichenwald, and although the Shock are a lot better record-wise here, Shanghai would much rather pick this map than Hollywood since they're still really bad on that map. But once again, the Shock came out making a statement on their attack like on Havana. It didn't matter whether they were playing Orisa Hog with DPS or some variant of GOAT. They practically cruised through Eichenwald and ended up with a 3 minute time bank. The Dragons were not about to lay down and take it though. While they did not complete the map with blazing fast speed like the Shock did, they still did manage to complete the map with about a minute and a half remaining. And since they had the smaller time bank, they would get the opportunity to keep the momentum moving forward by attacking first during the extra rounds. Shout out to Sinatra for playing some more Reaper again. I thought it was really interesting to see him go on that hero, even though it did not work the way he wanted it to. Anyway, while they failed to unlock the payload, 92% progress for the Dragons is pretty good, especially when you consider the fact that they only had a minute and a half. Good work by Choi Yobin during the stop, by the way. He actually carried on the Roadhog. And unfortunately for Shanghai, their defense did not go the way they would have hoped it would. All it took was one single team fight for the Shock to get more progress and win the map. And yet again, the Orisa Hog from San Francisco proved to be on point as Choi Open yet again landed some crucial hooks thanks to some great teamwork with Super. The roles had been reversed. The Dragons were now the ones on the back foot. Their comfortable 3 lead was suddenly gone. It seemed like they were the ones now getting cornered. Or so I thought. The Shanghai Dragons came out and played a fantastic defense on Dorado. It was so good that the Shock couldn't even make it halfway through point B. Diem and Gamsu played pretty well. But the star of the show this round would end up being Ding because of his absolutely insane 20 player kill streak. And on their attack, the Dragons kept on doing what's been working best for them in the playoffs by running some Orisa Hog and DPS. And despite some hard carry plays by Choi Oban early on, the Dragons pushed through point A. And after a short hold by the Shock that involved Sinatra once again swapping over to Widow for some reason, the Dragons were finally able to break through and win Dorado and the Stage 3 title. Thank goodness the Dragons didn't choke this away. It would have been embarrassing. Not only would this have been painful for the Org and their fans, who would have gotten denied of a redemption story, but this loss could have really hurt the confidence of some of their players. For those of you who don't know, 
Yunjin, Koma, Luffy, and Ding were all part of the Kongdu Panthera roster who blew a lead to Runaway and Contenders. If they got denied a championship of some sort again because of a blown lead, then that would have stung a lot. Good on Shanghai for being clutch when it mattered most. Good work by their management as well. Last year's 0-40 campaign was pitiful, but that's in the past. This is a completely different team. They assembled a very strong Korean roster. Diem and the former Kongdu Panthera players have proven to be worth the money, and trading for a veteran like Gamsu has also been a huge bonus for them. Once again, congrats to the Shanghai Dragons. This stage title that they won is very well deserved. Their road to get here was not easy, and it will definitely go down as one of the toughest ones in league history. They took down many of the top dogs in the Overwatch League, but now we're at the point where we can't exactly call the Dragons underdogs, now can we? They're at the moment the number one team in the Overwatch League. The narrative behind it all is amazing. So many good storylines come out of this historic victory. Think about it. Shanghai finally won something after all this time while passing off the worst all-time map differential to the Florida Mayhem. Gamsu, who is one of the most likable players in the league, also won a championship finally. And how about the former Kangdu Panthera players? They were able to get revenge on Runaway, who are obviously now the Titans, by defeating them in their playoff run, and they finally got that ever-so-elusive first place they've been seeking for a while now. And the best thing of all about this championship run, in my opinion, is that the Dragons won without having to rely on tank and support-heavy compositions. They pretty much stuck with their comfort picks by having Ding almost always play Farah than having Diem use Snipers or Sombra. Gamsu's Wrecking Ball and Arissa, alongside the flexibility of Youngjin and the consistent support play of Koma and Luffy proved to be too much for any team that crossed paths with them in this tournament. Looking at this from the Shock's point of view, there really isn't all that much to feel bad about. Yeah, sure, you failed to win a second stage title in a row, but you still almost won even though you've played very little DPS this entire year. This team and their fans should feel very proud. Three straight stage finals appearances is proof of how dominant they've been this season. Can we all take a moment to appreciate how crazy Choi Obin was in this set? The man played out of his mind. If it weren't for the hard carry plays he made, I don't know if the Shock even make it to a 7th map. He would have easily have been my MVP in this game if the Shock won. Speaking of MVPs, Ding was the one who would end up claiming player of the match, and rightfully so I'd like to add. His fair was ridiculous. Every aspect of how he played was incredible. Look at his stats. The man had well over 100k damage, and look at that direct rocket accuracy. He was nearly hitting a direct rocket one out of every five times he shot. The barrages from him also happened to get a lot of value. I wouldn't have given this award to anybody else. Congrats to Ding. He put on a show. Alrighty, now I quickly just wanted to give a few final words regarding the stage 3 finals, and then I'll wrap up the video. So overall, I found this game to be very entertaining. Some of the early maps were a little lopsided at times, but once the shock woke up, this series ended up being quite enjoyable. It literally had everything I wanted. There was a surprise lineup ran by the Shock. We saw epic DPS play from both sides, and there were some really close maps that went back and forth. One final congrats to the Shanghai Dragons. You guys played a terrific game, and I could not be more excited to see how well you do in Stage 4 and beyond that. And with that being said, that is going to conclude my brief recap and personal opinion on the Stage 3 Finals. If you enjoyed this content, then I would appreciate it if you could like, comment, and subscribe. As always, thank you all so much for watching today's video, and until next time, this is ATP, signing out. Peace.